welcome to another episode of Shed Talk. So we're in the infamous shed and today we're going to have a little bit of a, a deep dive into how to choose your next trail running shoe. Okay, so let's get straight into how to choose your next trail running shoe. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is talk about those that already have a trail running shoe that they like, that they love, and that worked for them. The first question I want to pose to, to you lot is, why are you changing the shoe? If it works, if it's, it serves the purposes for the terrain that you're running on, it's comfortable, it fits well, you have no major issues, no injuries, no niggles, then that shoe probably is the best shoe for you, and you should obviously continue to use that. Now, obviously, sometimes the the brand change the model, which then forces you to have to reevaluate that shoe, which is obviously an absolutely valid point. However, if you're just looking to change up the shoe because you're bored of that particular model, you want to maybe explore some different ones, I'd argue you probably best off served keeping the one that you already have that works well for you. However, if you're only just getting into trail running or you have found a shoe that maybe isn't doing the job that you want it to or you're looking to maybe change up the type of terrain you're running on then obviously yes we want to look at exploring different options and trying to find out that shoe that suits best so how do we choose a trail shoe in a very similar fashion to a road running shoe, the first thing that you need to prioritize when looking at buying a new running shoe in general is fit and comfort. I.e. those are the two things that should determine your shoe purchase is one, does it fit correctly? And two, does it feel comfortable as you're moving around in the shoe? Granted, sometimes that can obviously work. You have a shoe that fits well and it feels comfortable when you're walking around the, the shoe shop or when you've tried them on at home after buying them online and then you go out for a run and they don't feel so great. However, there's always gonna be a trial and error nature to buying new shoes in the first place. So the fit and comfort is still the best way to determine if that is gonna be the appropriate shoe for you. Now, how do we ideally understand whether or not a shoe fits well well what I like to do other than obviously just going off your size ie the size of your feet and um, what I like to do is to take the insoles out of the shoes and stand on them so that you get a better idea of how your foot fits in the shoe so what we want to do here is take out the insoles of your footwear place them on the ground sort of hip width apart ready to stand in them so all we're gonna to look to do now is to place the heel right into the back of the heel cup. Okay, sometimes it's easy to get someone to assist with this just to make sure that the foot is right back into the shoe. And if you're buying them from a, a reputable running shoe shop, they probably should do this for you as well just to check the fit. Then obviously I'm gonna repeat that with my other foot. And then from there, you're just gonna stand normally. So what we're looking for is obviously, one, do we have a little bit of space in front of the big toe? Ideally we want around a thumbnail's width as we come down. So something like that to show that we've got enough space in the front of the shoe. And then the other thing we're looking for is just simply, does the foot fit into the insole? I.e. is the foot too wide for this particular shoe? So we're obviously coming in and just seeing, making sure that the toe, that the balls of the feet on the outside and the inside of the foot don't spill over the insole. Because obviously if they do, that means they're gonna be packed into the shoe and therefore potentially rub along these areas here. And obviously you want to make sure that you're standing up nice and tall to make sure you're applying the right amount of pressure. Simple way to make sure that your feet do fit into that shoe not only from a size perspective but also from the toe box width and even down to the heel lock section as well if you see any excess space around the insole or obviously if you see your foot spilling over it may be worth looking at a different type of shoe whether that's a wider toe box or obviously it may be a more compact or narrow shoe yes there's obviously brands that are synonymous with being more narrow and ones that are, are sort of synonymous with being more 
wide in the toe box. However, most brands of shoes nowadays do some form of narrower fitting shoe and some form of wider fitting shoe in most of their popular brands. So it is just definitely worthwhile trying on lots of different brands of shoes and finding out the one that fits the most. Once you've got your fit, then obviously it's onto the comfort. So then you want to have a walk around, whether that's at home if you've bought them online, or even if you have bought them in a shop, taking them back and just spending a few days walking around the house, up and down stairs, and just making sure that they feel comfortable and there's nowhere that's rubbing or anything like that, so that you know you've maximized the chances that that shoe should work well for you when you then take it for a spin outside. Once you've determined that the shoe fits and feels comfortable, the last piece of the puzzle is obviously just understanding the grip requirements that you need for the typical terrain that you're going to run on. Now, a lot of trail shoes tend to be what's called good all-rounders. So they have a, a moderate lug depth, let's say three or four millimeters. The lugs are just basically the little studs on the bottom of a shoe or the outsole of the shoe. Uh, and they tend to have a, a moderate amount of spacing so that they're okay in typical compact grounds, maybe a bit of, of wet rock, but nothing too uh, slippery, and also not too bad in some level of mud, but not the deep mud. For most trail runners, that will probably be more than adequate, which obviously opens up a huge uh, choice of shoes for you to go for. However, if you find that you need a little bit more of a sort of specialist type of grip, that's where then that might narrow the field of options down for you based on the, the models or brands that you found that tend to fit well and feel comfortable. So how do we know what is the right grip for the terrain that we're running on if we need something a little bit more specialist? Well, there's two factors that we need to consider. The first is the lug depth. So as I mentioned before, we have obviously the tread, the studs, on the bottom of the shoe, which is referred to as the outsole. Uh, so the depth of these, how long they are, uh, and obviously the spacing of these determine what terrain that shoe is best suited for. If it's not as deep a lug length and more of them, so they're really spread across the whole of the shoe, as you can see, for example, in these Hoka Torrent, more suited to compact terrain, rocks, things like that, not necessarily the deep mud. Because there's lots of them all close together, there's much more surface area and therefore much better grip on stuff that's more compact and flat in nature switch that up and alternate that with something like this, the Salomon Wild Cross, where you can see now that we have deeper lugs and much more spaced apart, i.e. there's a lot more rubber in between them. So not necessarily as much surface area in contact with the ground, but with the deeper lugs, these shoes are, tend to be better suited for bogs and muddy terrain and then obviously a little bit more loose underfoot such as rocky uh, mountainous terrain especially on things like uh, loose gravelly or slaty shaly descent that's the kind of stuff that you want to be using on that sort of terrain we have a couple more examples of that such as the New Balance Summit Unknown 2. Again, you can see relatively deep lugs and spaced out. Something again, more suited to that kind of muddy or loose terrain. And then we also have the New Balance Nitrel, which again, you can see varying in terms of the grip, but a lot of lugs close together and not too deep in terms of the, the length of those lugs. So again, something that'd be much more suited for compact terrain and, and flat rocks and things like that. And that's it. So you found a shoe that satisfies the requirement for grip for the terrain that you're running on, or you've got an everyday shoe, and then you've tried it on, it fits well, you've taken the insoles out to prove that, and it feels comfortable when walking around or spending a few days moving around the house. You've ticked all the right boxes there to determine that that is the best chance that you've got that that shoe will work for you. So then obviously the last test is to just get out and go for a run and everything should hopefully fall into place. The final thing I do want to talk about though, because this inevitably comes up in a lot of conversations and will be in a lot of articles, is understanding the, the heel to toe drop 
also the, the stack height of the shoe. So these are some numbers that you may hear referred to or the terms referred to. And I just wanted to quickly go through those to help you understand what they mean and the implications when it comes to choosing uh, a new trail shoe. So first up, we have what's called the stack height. So this is simply referred to as the distance from the ground to the heel and the distance from the ground to the toes. So we're talking about essentially all the cushioning and the outsole of a shoe. How thick of that is that at the heel and how thick is that at the forefoot? That's referred to as the stack height and that's expressed in millimeters. That will give us two values. So for example, we could have 20 mil in the heel and then 10 mil, 10 mil, mil, 10 millimeters at the toes. That would then give us a heel to toe drop of 10 millimeters because the difference in height between the two is also 10. And that's just an example. Most road shoes tend to be around the 10 to 12 millimeter in heel to toe drop, whereas trail shoes can be anything from 10 to 12 all the way down to a zero drop with something like the Ultras. So what does that necessarily mean for you? Well, obviously it changes the position of the foot slightly. So if we're looking at something that has a smaller heel to toe drop, then obviously the foot is gonna be more level in position compared to something with a higher heel to toe drop. It's gonna raise the heel up a little bit higher than obviously the forefoot. Now, obviously we're talking millimeters here. So yes, the position of the foot will slightly change. Therefore the loading of the foot and the lower leg might slightly change. But in my humble opinion, that has very little implication on running performance. It may have an implication on comfort. So when looking at a trail running shoe, if you've already had one before, it may be worth looking at the stack height of that shoe and the heel to toe drop of that shoe to then potentially line up some other options from other brands that might have similar statistics to try and give you a similar feel in terms of how the foot is positioned and how you load that foot. However, if you're getting a new shoe, I'd argue that on the whole, you shouldn't really need to be concerned with those numbers. Just go off the previous principles of the fit, the comfort and the grip. Equally, you may find that you want multiple pairs of trail shoes to satisfy different scenarios. So for me, in my example, I have my Hoka Torrent 2s. They are my everyday trail shoe. As we talked about before, these have got quite a lot of cushioning. So quite a high stack height at the heel and similarly quite a high stack height at the forefoot. So they only have a five millimeter heel to toe drop, so quite low, but they've got quite a chunky bit of cushioning. And for me as a runner, I find that if I go too minimalist in terms of cushioning, I start to get little bits of pain around my ankles just because they don't have as much support. However, when I'm running on something that's a bit more loose or boggy, these obviously don't have as much grip and as much stability as other options. So that's where then my Salomon Wild Cross or my New Balance Summit Unknown 2s come in. So with the Salomon Wild Cross, as we saw, quite an aggressive tread there, deep lugs, much more spaced apart for that loose terrain and loose rock. However, these have an eight millimeter drop. So there's a difference straight away there between the shoes and also not necessarily as much cushioning, certainly in the forefoot compared to the Hokas to give you a little bit more feel when you're running on different terrains and a little bit more sort of proprioception back to the foot. With the Summit Unknowns, they have a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop. So again, different from the Salomons, different from the Hokas. But in my humble opinion, if you're doing your strength training, you're doing mobility work and exposing your foot to different loadings and different positions, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to have different shoes from different brands with different heel to toe drops and suffer no ill effect such as myself and I imagine lots of other runners out there. And it also then gives you options to be able to train in different scenarios on different terrains and have a shoe that is fit for purpose. But all three of those still satisfy those initial criteria of they all fit, they're all comfortable, and obviously they have the grip that I need for the particular type of terrain. And there you have it. That's how to choose your next trail running shoe. Any questions, please fire them in the comments below. 
I'd love it if you would subscribe and like this video or share it with anyone else that needs a bit of advice on how to choose their next trail running shoe and also just share the channel with others for those that are looking to perform at their best in marathons and ultra marathons and beyond.